Well, here it is, the summit of Box Springs Mountain. This is about as high as I can go without crossing the fence. But, it looks like this outcropping is on the highest point of the mountain anyways, from what I could see. So this is it, summit of Box Springs Mountain, just under 3,100 feet above sea level, and about 1,200 feet above my starting point, which is down there in that lot. Zoom in. The lot's down there, and I'm parked over near the street here, which is just off of Pigeon Pass, Hidden Springs Road. So I'm parked just a few feet up from the street in the, the first little dirt lot. And feels good. I finally hiked, finally hiked Box Springs Mountain. Very happy. Forget the white stuff on my face. I put on sunscreen before I even hit the trail today, which is what you're technically supposed to do. So I got a lot of white stuff on my face. Because now, now, especially now that we're going into spring, you're going to definitely want to be protected. But, but we're on Box Springs Mountain. This is the actual summit of it. Those sites over there are a little bit lower in elevation. Let's zoom back out. So we're actually at the highest peak in the Box Springs Mountains, which is Box Springs Mountain Peak itself. Pretty neat peak. I mean, yeah, it's fairly, t fairly typical for Southern California in the sense that there are radio towers up here, but still, this is a worthy hike. I thought the uh, I thought the uh, mileage, I thought the distance from the first set of towers over there was going to be like a quarter or half a mile. <laughs> I had way overestimated it. Really short. It's like a scarcely three three minute walk. So this is the this is the high point of the Box Springs Mountains. And as you can see, views are absolutely outstanding from here. Beautiful views of the Inland Empire. So, if you're looking for something different, come to Box Springs Mountain. I mean, there are plenty of other trails on the other side of the ridge, on the north side of the mountain. Uh, the Two Trees Trail comes up from that direction, coming towards us. Um, you got the Skyline Trail, plenty of other ones you can hike. But this is it. This is the actual summit, summit plateau of the mountain itself, and the high point is right here, right where this tower set is. Just don't trespass. up here, enjoy the views, take a break, get a snack. Probably going to dip into a quick snack and a water bottle. And then I'm going to head back down. There's, a, there's another mountain on the north, towards the north. Uh, it's called Sugarloaf Mountain. It's another, another one of the sugar loaves in Southern California. Um, I haven't I haven't planned the driving directions, or I probably would have done a quick uh, scramble up that one today. But, give me another reason to come back. I don't know if there's a survey marker around here. If there is, I assume it's probably inside of the property behind the chain link fence. But this is the high point right here. Box Springs Mountain. I don't know if it's 3,090 feet, like some say, or 3,047 feet, like others say, but regardless of which one it is, I'm here. 
And it was a pleasant hike. Nothing too strenuous. There are some steep spots, so... Um, the trail gradually switched back its way up from the parking area. Um, and since the switchbacks have been cut so much, you actually have options as to whether you just want to bypass the switchbacks and go straight up the ridge, because there's a the trail that cuts through the switchbacks, and it's actually pretty well established by uh, a lot of foot traffic. Or you could do what I did, is mainly stick to the switchbacks for a slightly longer but gentler uphill grind. Um, I'm glad I I'm glad I came out here. I was really not so sure what I wanted to do today, but coming up here was definitely the right decision. I've been meaning to get to the Box Springs Mountains for a while, and glad I did. It's very pleasant up here, and it's cool a little bit on the cool side, nice and breezy. It feels good. Probably be in the upper 60s today. Fairly typical for this time of year, late March. Um, you see the foothills of the San Bernardinos. You probably won't get a good shot of it here on the camera, but I could see McKinley Mountain. It's not this ridge, it's underneath it. That's why it's going to be harder to see, but McKinley Mountain's about here. City Creek Road, or California 330 is there, and that's Harrison Mountain, which is about 4,700 feet. It's hard to see. It's hard to see. It's kind of hard to see with your eyes because uh, Harrison Mountain is below, way well below that crest there. But definitely wouldn't mind trying that. Yeah, Strawberry Peak, the uh, San Bernardino's Strawberry Peak, not to be confused with the one in the Angeles National Forest. Then we got, I can see Keller Peaks there. And it's hard to see, it's to the left left of Keller Peak. You won't probably see it very well here, but I could see Butler Peak, which is getting closer to Big Bear Lake. Butler Peak is about 8,500 feet in elevation, so. And of course here we got San Bernardino Peak, the San Bernardino Peak Ridge, and the San Gregonia Wilderness. And I can see Ukaipa Ridge, which is, probably won't show up very well defined on the camera, but. It's the ridge that's a little bit, a little bit lower than the San Gregonio ridge line, and of course we got the Moreno Valley. Of course, again there are the San Gabriel's, another mountain range I cherish very highly. And once again, you'll be able to get a very good shot of the Santa Ana Mountains from here too. Just scramble down these rocks. Very clear shot of the Santa Ana is unobstructed this side here. Santa Ana is being one of my very favorite mountain ranges to hike. And the Chino Hills. And even the western parts of the Angeles National Forest. And if it weren't so hazy, you could probably even see the Santa Monica Mountains. But I picked a really good day. Weather's finally seasonal, seasonable as opposed to being as warm as it was in January. February, but I very highly recommend a hike up Box Springs Mountain. There's so many ways you could you could do a very long hike from the Two Trees Trail to the the main dirt road along the spine. That'll be a, probably a significantly longer hike than the one I took, which I'd estimate probably going to be more like I don't know if it's going to be quite six. I think it's going to be more like four and a half miles round trip I'm estimating. I don't have high tech GPS equipment and stuff, so I like to study maps, get my bearings, and just hike it. Well see you on the way down for any special finds, any interesting things. And start plotting the next one.